Oh, hello, 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 everybody. Fighting, fighting with the electronics as I always do. Oh, yes. I know, make the funny faces, right? When you're sitting there, like you're like staring at two different screens and trying to figure it all out. <sighs> I'll tell you, I am not the most technical soul on the planet. That's no secret. I'm trying to coordinate laptop, phone, lives. Oh my God. So, hi guys, how's it going? When you get here, say hi, uh, little red button, wherever it is up there, means I'm live. If not, hashtag replay so that I know that you watched. Um, you know, as we go along here, you know, you can feel free to ask questions as I break everything. Um, I've done a couple of tutorials already on using tumbler tape. I gotta tell you, I'm so in love with this stuff, I can't even, I can't even. It is just made my life a billion times easier. It gives me so much versatility um, in what I'm making. You can make your own files pretty easy. Um, you can purchase files, of course, on Etsy or, you know, various other websites. Super easy. Um, I got my template from kkcustomtnt.com. Uh, same place as I get my tumbler tape from. I love, um, I love the website. I love the woman who runs it. Uh, she's amazing. Her name's Nicole. Um, prices are incredibly reasonable. Um, there's a lot of hullabaloo about, you know, what's the best double-sided adhesive. I've done six different kinds. Tumblr tape is my go-to. It is, it, it is thin, first of all. So what, what that means is it's going to wrap very easily around your cup. Um, it also cuts really well, and people ask a thousand questions about this. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to say. Okay, every machine cuts differently, every every single machine. It, it doesn't matter what whether you have a Cricut Maker and I have a Cricut Maker. Um, it's gonna, it may cut differently for you, so what I use might not work for you when you're cutting the tumbler tape. Little FYI tip, guys, when you trim your tumbler tape, save these. Yeah, I know, I'm a hoarder. I, it's true, I do. I save everything. But you would be surprised how handy these little strips come. Like, let's say uh, you're, you're wrapping a file around and you you miss your shot. Like, at like you, you measured twice, you cut once, and you're wrapping it around. It's like, oh, crap. I'm still t a little bit too short. This will save you. Save your butt right there. I don't throw away any of my tumbler tape scraps because even, like, uh, the sheets are... Hold on, let me look. Just for you that are not familiar. It comes in a big old package, like, yo... The sheets are um, like 17 by 12, I think. So basically, you're going to get 10 pages like 
this big. If you cut it in half, you're going to get two 20 ounce tumblers out of each sheet. So, yeah, comes down to be like after shipping and all that other stuff, like up right around a dollar. So, hey, super good. Um, I love the fact that I don't need to do any cup prep. I mean, you could. Like, it, it's like with anything. Uh, if you want to paint your cup so you get a lighter, darker look underneath your adhesive tape, that, that's fine. You can totally do that. Um, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Because I found, again, all products not created equally. Um, with tumbler tape, and I always sound like I'm trying to sell it, and I'm not. It's just I, I love... I, I love the product. Um, so what I've found is, is that it, the coverage is fantastic on it. Like, honestly, I don't have to keep coming back in, get the glue out or the epoxy seal or the Mod Podge or the tacket or anything and fill in gaps and holes and spots because my glitter didn't cover properly. So what I'm doing right now is, is, and I like to do this after I, after this live, I probably, yeah, brush stroke patina, I believe it's called. It looks like a bunch of really weird, like squiggly wavy kind of things on there. Um, now, and then um, for the tumbler tape, Nicole actually has given us a discount. So if you use Kiri, 10 you get a little discount on your tumbler tape which is like hey we all want you to save a little a couple bucks um so it's super easy to use so i and i do this on the live because some of you don't know how to do this and those that you those that do well give me a couple minutes and then we'll get into it but um for those of you who've never wrapped a tumbler before there's a couple of things, and I, I again, I have tutorials on all of this. I love this little tool. This is this is a lifesaver, seriously. Not only can you get your straight start line, which is like the most important thing when you're doing a wrap of any kind, whether it's water slide wrap, printable vinyl wrap, tumbler tape wrap, any kind of wrap going around your cup, and you're and of course we're using straight because like let's face it, straight's way easier than to try to deal with tapers because tapers are a nightmare. I only have a Cricut maker and I don't have the ability to warp and do all kinds of stuff. So, and honestly, I like the look. I like the look better of the straight cups. So. The most important thing is, is you get a straight start line. Now you can use tape and you can do all kinds of stuff, but why bother? If you have, most of us already have one of these. All you do is line, open this up, line it up on the side, get yourself a pencil. Um, I did use marker before. I, you know, honestly, I've, I've tried a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I used a marker and then when I was glittering, of course, you have a big black streak or red streak or whatever color marker that you're using. Well, I could see it through my glitter. I, it was white glitter, and I it was just like a little spot. I could see the line. I was like, oh, okay, I'm done there. I'm not doing that again. So now I just use a mechanical pencil. I like these pencils because they have like a little flat part that sits right up against the, um, the edge here. And then I, I, you come in straight, and then you just draw a line right up your tumbler boom straight and that's all there is to it and then I cut and trim and um, you know all that stuff when I do mine and again everybody's gonna be different when I do mine I leave a gap slight gap at the top because a lot like fabric tumblers you want to get a good seal when you do your epoxy on here so I don't take the tape all the way up to the top. I just leave a little tiny edge. It's like maybe a couple of millimeters. It's super small. And then for me, 
personally, like there are people that will take it all the way down to the edge of the cup here and spend all this time wrapping the tape and pulling it and cutting away and what, like, no, not, not me. I take it down to right about where the curve on the cup starts and then I know I'm good. Like, I, like, I don't have to worry about it. If you like the silver look, you can leave it. If you don't like the silver look, you grab yourself your epoxy seal, a little bit of paint, whatever the main color of glitter, paint it. Uh, you, you do want to sand here first, um, wipe it off, paint it with your epoxy seal, and then cover it with your glitter, and boom, you're ready to go. Um, so anyhow, as I, as I sit here and yap, okay, this is going to work great. One more cut and then we'll get it on here and then we get to glitter. So I've been playing with a lot of different things lately. I've been playing with foil. I love foil. Foil is like super awesome to work with. Um, it, it can be a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie, and it can definitely have it has its challenges because a lot of us get our foil like this. These I just got off of Amazon. There's three colors. So silver, gold. This is kind of supposed to be copper, but it's more of like a rose gold, which is really pretty. Um, then there's a, like a regular gold and a silver. I think this were like, I don't know, 12-ish dollars. They last forever. But the problem with these is, is they're all like mashed in here. So when you go to take it out, you got to spend some time kind of smoothing out pieces and whatever. But I pretty much like got it so that I don't have any problems with the um, getting it to lay flat. And it always looks good. You can get your template at kkcustomtnt.com as well as your tumbler tape. And if you get your tumbler tape, then you can use a discount code Kiri10. It's my first name, 10, all capital letters. Get a little discount um, for a first timer, which is really cool. And you can never remember which is the top, which is the bottom. All right. And then you're just going to apply it. So I know I have a perfectly straight line. A couple of tricks. When you're doing your, your adhesive vinyl, uh, you only want to go in very small increments as you wrap around the cup. So then if there's an issue or problem, you don't have to waste a piece by ripping the whole thing off. And you can pretty easily um, get an adjustment. The whole area and the floor. Oh, Samantha, um, you can get them anywhere. Like, basically, all that that is, that's from Cricut. I had a coupon. I think I got it at Joanne Fabrics. I had a coupon for, like, half off. Um, they're usually, like, 30 bucks or something. But it all it, it's used for scrapbooking. So, like, any, like, there's, like, tons of them. There's tons and tons of different kinds. This one has a little like uh, thingy that expands out on it, so you can cut bigger pieces. Um, really simple. It's just a rulered sheet. Um, but there's actually like there's this little thingy that comes out. It's pretty cool. And then you can cut like a larger, a larger piece of vinyl, larger piece of paper, larger piece of tape. Uh, uh, adhesive tape stuff like that when you're cutting any kind of adhesive tape whether it's tumbler tape or whatever xyz brand uh you need to clean your blades occasionally because it's sticky it has glue on it so you do want to make sure get yourself a little alcohol come in and clean those off and make sure you cut your i'm sorry clean your blade in your machine, whether you're using a silhouette, a cricket, whatever you're cutting, I need to find something to prop behind my cup. All right, we're just going to use this old mold. Again, I will get, I actually, I, I'm trying to get like a phone stand because seriously, I've, I'm just like, I've been doing more lives and I just haven't 
I had a minute to get a setup going. I've been dealing with stuff. I'm just lining this up. Okay, and now you saw how little that I peeled away. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to wrap my cup around and make sure I'm straight. And you want it to wrap evenly. So because I, I was actually, I only put a little on here, now I can pull this off. And find my line again. Oh. oh, let me get my. The other reason I like using that cutter thing, uh, not only just to get my straight line, but also to cut away all my excess because then I know I'm straight. Then I know I'm straight. Because honestly, when you're doing, when you're doing. Whether it's tape or whether you're doing um, vinyl, whatever you're doing, if a straight line is so much easier. I'm not kidding. It's just, it makes it so much easier. Then you get a nice clean line and then you don't have any problems. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to peel back a little bit of time and you just come in and you just kind of, you just rub it down. couple of tips when you're doing Again, I'm going to call it Tumblr Tape because this is the brand that I like and that I use. But whatever you're using, make sure you're burnishing really well. Like, make sure you get all of this pressed down. And when you, when you go to cut it on your mat, when you're just laying it down, you're putting it on your mat before you put it in your machine... Take your little um, burnishing tool and go over the whole thing. Make sure every part of it is pressed down. The reason that you want to do that um, when you're cutting is because it, it's going to give you a more precise cut. If there's little air pockets, issues, uh, issues can arise from there. And it's not going to cut all the way through. Um... It'll cut completely through. It depends. So I always just make sure that what I do is, is I just burnish it down. Again, it was a learning experience. I had to learn how to, you know, I had to make sure that I was messing up enough so that I would be able to educate everybody else how to do this. <laughs> Yeah, most of them do. Most of them do. Um, pencil and draw is the part I was confused with. Yeah, you just flip it up. Um, you know, like I said, it it works. It worked. I, it, I actually came across that um, simply by accident when I was doing a cup. And um, I'm like, oh my God, this works. Wow, how cool. So I immediately made a I made a little uh, live. The nice thing too about this tape is if you kind of go off, you can sort of peel back. You do need to be careful. You, I'm not gonna I'm not kidding. It's super sticky and um, you do need to kind of be careful with it. But if you go off a little bit, it's pretty easy to clean up and I'm actually gonna be going around my bottom. I'm going to be covering the bottom of my tumbler. Now, when you cut sizing, measure your cup. Every cup is different. Now, I've done like, I don't know, I bought a case, case of cups and my cups all were eight, uh, I want to say like 9.2, 9.20 around by eight length. Now this one is a little different. It's just a tiny, 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 tiny bit, which is maybe like, I don't know, a millimeter. So a little bit more than a millimeter. 
You're going to find that that happens. Don't worry about it. Just chop it off with your X-Acto blade. And it's, it matches great up at the top. It's down here at the bottom. It's slightly off. And that's probably because I, I kind of wrapped a little bit weird. Um, I always do my trimming before I start my glittering just because I find it's easier. Okay. And rub it all down. Now, I had not picked what colors I was going to do. So I'm thinking I did blue. I did a blue one. It came out really good. Um, thinking maybe purples or something like that. I think purples would be really good. Uh, let me see what's going on here with my my phone. I don't know. Okay, so well, I'm glad I have my laptop here because it. Yeah, I can't see any comments on there, so I do have my laptop. Uh, okay. I think we're going to do purples, so let's see. I'm going to use Indigo Ice, I think, or as a nice dark purple. Um, oh, yeah. Here we go. I'm going to try some chunky, just because. I think chunky would be really cool. Maybe some unicorn tears. I have like way too many over there. Oh, that's pretty. I use some crafty cow. I've got some big delicious. Now I need a lighter color to offset. I'm gonna do all purple, just cause I think that will be really cool. So we're gonna do. I'm going to try some chunky. I don't know how it's going to work. Um, I mean, it, it'll work. It, it definitely will work. It's just sometimes it's kind of tricky. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, have you ever noticed when, like, you have your favorites, and then you use them over, and, oh, I, this is a new one, I haven't tried this yet, um, you use them over and over and over and over and over again, like, I am totally hooked on BJ's Glitters, um, it's called Maleficent, and I use it on way too many cups, like, way too many cups. But it's super awesome. It's like this really cool iridescent uh, purple. It's really, really, really pretty. All right. So that's what we're going to do. And then we'll use some foil on here as well. Because, yeah, why not, right? So you can ask me questions as we go along. I see your poster. I love that movie, The Labyrinth, one of my best. Oh, Yeah. That's, um, that's actually an original from the release. It's been up there for like 20, 25, 26 years. I am very careful with it and make sure I dust it and clean it and stuff like that. I wish I had had it framed instead of putting, um, thumbtacks in. Yeah. Now, I like to have, I like to use paper plates. You guys use whatever makes your heart happy. And the reason I like my paper plates is because I can switch off and then not have to like dump and keep emptying my glitter every single time I go to change a color. So I usually have a couple plates. Let me see if I can adjust this a little more. I really want to get a stand. I hope this is going to work. And if you guys fall over, I will pick you up. So we've got um, Figalicious, Indigo Ice, Unicorn Tears, Maleficent, Wisteria Diamonds. And then I have this really pretty Crafty Cow Purple People Eater, which I thought, ooh. So I have no idea. 
when you're using your adhesive tapes, I really recommend you get yourself one of these things. And this is just called a weeding pen. And uh, folks, you can make one if you have a mechanical pencil. All you need to do is take the lead out and put a needle, a sewing needle down in here. And voila, you have yourself a, um, a weeding pen. I just happened to get one when I got some um, tweezers. You want to have some tweezers just in case. I always have a little pair of scissors without vinyl stuck to it. I have been weeding, so I got to show you guys what I'm working on because it's driving. Oh my God, this is. Have you ever had that one project where it's like, oh my God, I can't wait till I'm done with this thing because it's driving me nuts? I've cut this three times. I worked on this for like. A week <laughs> so it's a supernatural tribute cup and I'm doing smoke background and then I'm gonna do um, I'm hoping that it comes in soon um, there's like this really gorgeous chameleon iridescent glitter that uh, I'm sorry mica that BJ's has which I'm dying to get my hands on so anyhow Hi, Michelle. Okay, so as we go, like I said, ask me questions. I'm just here taking up space in your day. Um, so what I found is now you're not going to, you'll start to see the pattern emerge as I pull the tapes off. Um, one of the things is, is you've got to kind of guess. All right, I have X, how many colors that you're going to do? Um, and then you want to sort of disperse these colors around. When you work with double-sided adhesive tapes, you've got to go from the darkest color to the lightest color. And the reason is because it's a double-sided adhesive tape. And when you rub it in, sometimes there's little, like little spots that just don't get covered well or... Um, and you don't want your dark color when you come back in over it. You don't want your dark color getting into your light colors and then it looks messy. Like I have an example. Shoot. Let me show you. Because this is the best way that I can show you. So what I did was as I was working on this cup, and the, um, I have found with tumbler tape, again, unlike the others, I don't have to, like, seal, which I love. But, um, so when I was doing my burnishing, I did, when I was new to doing the cups, and so what I did was, is I did the gold first, because I thought, oh, yeah, and I did my gold first. And then I did my black. And what happened was, is, first of all, the black migrated but if you notice down here on this seam, you can see how the black sort of dispersed away and got caught up in the gold. So there's like this whole bag. And I didn't even notice it until I put my epoxy on. Um, but this whole section where this, the back is, it's all like black glitter has shifted and moved. So that's it. If you go from dark to light, then you don't have those problems. Okay, so the challenge is, is how many colors do we have? And then how many, how, how are we going to put the stuff on? Plus, I know I'm going to be doing foil. And you can get foils, like, all over the place. Like, I got these from KK Custom TNT. I love these. These are super cute. They're just all, like, um, animal prints. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. I got some... Um, Plain. I got like some kind of hippie type boho kind of ones. I got some, I got a bunch plus Amazon and Amazon has a bunch too. So I'm going to say I'm going to have the chunkies I'm not so positive about. So I know I have, I have six colors. So I'm just going to kind of come around here and I'm going to skip some of these um, cut lines. They're, they're bigger. So you want to take that into consideration too when you're doing it. And like, again, everybody's different. And the biggest thing here, guys, is let, come on, have fun. 
have fun with what you're doing and then you just peel it off see how you oh my gosh right super easy right I love that I love that I don't have to sit there put down glue but for me the hardest part is deciding oh what which <laughs> you know what am I gonna do see how like this one is a bigger piece so it's gonna leave like a big a big one and again, you're doing, oh, look at that. I knocked you down. <laughs> Told you. Sorry. Okay. Um, so again, you just kind of want to put them wherever you want. Um, I did it. What my very first one of these I did, I spent like, oh my God, I must have spent like two hours trying to decide, oh, what am I going to put this color? Where am I going to put that color? And I had a pen and I was like marking them off and I'm like, uh-uh. I just want to have fun. This is not fun doing it that way. And you just peel it off. Tumblr tape's amazing. Um, I love that it's super adhesive. I love that. I just love everything about it. And then I just take my little strips and I throw them away. Okay, so I think my darkest color is going to be the indigo ice. So we're going to do that first. And this is so easy. So all you do is you just take a little bit and you sprinkle it. And then you're just going to take your finger and rub right over. Now I always make little circles. Why do I make little circles? Because it actually press pushes all the glitter in all the directions so that I'm sure that I'm going to get good coverage. I don't worry about wiping all this off until I'm done. You will notice too that when you're doing this, it seems like you're using a lot of glitter, but you're really kind of using no glitter at all. I've actually taken like glitter, like and dragged it up and over and completely covered spots with it. Um, so glitter wise, it's very economical. And then you'll see like there's excess here. So what you could do is you can just sort of drag it if you really want to get it close. You don't want to touch your, um, your tape. You really don't want to touch it. And the reason that you don't want to touch it is because the oils in your fingers will take away your sticky. Okay. For brushes, you do need some brushes when you're doing this. Um, I use two different brushes. I use a chip brush, which is just a cheap. It's like the kind you do the wood grains in. And then I have my other brush, which is now decided. That, oh, I have this guy. So when you're brushing, um, you're, you don't want to drag heavy, like see how like I'm pressing down you and all it does is smear your glitter. What you're doing is, is you're just doing a, an, ag like aggressive, rapid stroke. Cause I have people that ask me all the time, I have glitter all over my cup and I can't get it off. What do I do? And then I see people say, Oh, take a ba baby wipe and wipe it down. No, don't do that. The reason you don't want to do that is because this paper will get wet. The BB wipe stuff gets down underneath. No, don't do that. Just come in here and brush it. And if you think this is going to be neat, guys, forget about it. It's not neat. It's not a neat job. It's glitter. It's going to be everywhere. Usually what I do is, is I brush off some of it onto my, you know, I get the majority off and then I just take my tumbler over to my trash and I just do it right over my trash because you know honestly it's like pff, I don't care it's a little teeny tiny bit of glitter I want a few more purple spots on here I think I'm gonna do again I'll do a few more
Oh uh, yeah, that's one thing about me is, is I like to cover all the bases. I want to make sure that you guys know everything that I know about doing it because it saves you time. And, you know, like I basically do these things so that I can help you be more efficient in your, your work. And that's all it is. That's all there is to it. It's just, I want to see people doing well. I want to see you thriving. And when you're trying something new and you're struggling with it and you're just fighting, 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 it's kind of like, that's no good. That's not fun. Sorry, I have to kind of like paying attention because this is where my seam is. I usually put a dark color over my seam part, if, I, if at all possible I do. And the reason that I do that is because sometimes when you're coming around, because it's, it's adhesive. So there'll be a little bit of sticky on the outside and then like, you know, you get your dark color your dark colors first and then it ends up sort of caught down the seam line while well, this this way here if you put your dark color in there then nobody's ever gonna know it's like boom done so I just take and brush off like a bunch till I get like to that point and then I just go over my trash can and just beat it up just beat the hell out of it seriously you're just gonna boom 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 and I'm going really light I'm going very light I'm not pushing down. I'm going very light. That is the key to success with getting the glitter off of the paper. Truly, it really is. It's like, wow. Okay, so I am also a rule breaker. I am. I always have been. I push it to the limit every day. That's, that's sort of like, it's funny, when I was younger, I saw Scarface. And for those of you who are young, you're not even going to know what I'm talking about. But it's an Al Pacino movie. And um, he's a gangster. And uh, he's trying to make it in the big world. So the theme song was Push It to the Limit. And I instantly fell in love with that song. And I said, yep, that's going to be me. I'm going to do that every day of my life. I'm going to push it to the limit and try new things and basically never give up, never surrender sort of thing. And I got like one little tiny piece. It's like so thin, but I can see it. It sticks out like a sore thumb underneath here. It's just this little, <laughs> little tiny piece that's driving me nuts. Um, yeah, because that does stick out, particularly underneath the purple. Okay, there we go. Anyhow, okay, so with the movie, but I, I do break rules because I, I sometimes it's like I want to know how this thing works. I want to know what can I do, how can I maximize my efficiency and yet still get like a really cool effect, do different things with it. So that to me was part of the fun of tumbler tape and learning how to use it. Okay, so here we're going to go into our second color. Um, so we're going to go from darkest to lightest. I want to make sure that I'm getting good coverage. I want to make sure that I'm getting um, enough color, you know, a dispersion. And not putting all of my same colors together. Like, I, I really want to make sure that I'm not doing that. So, I'm actually going to, because I started pulling off, and sometimes you, you can't really see how the pattern is going to emerge. So, I've got this really dark purple right here. If I come in with the purple rain next, which would be my next darkest color, if I come in 
right up against that, you're not going to see, it's all going to kind of blend together and bleed together. So again, this is where we kind of step outside the box, break the rule and say, okay, well then I'll go into the next lightest color instead of doing like, okay, you know, the second, I'm going to do the third color. Hopefully there's going to be enough dispersion between the two and then you And I think there will be. So this is Crafty Cow Purple People Eater. I'm just going to put a little bit here. And I'm going to brush that off. Just So what I basically did, just a little tiny bit. I'm just going to brush it off. I can see the change. I can see that there is a color difference there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, so now I know I'm okay. This is a really pretty color. This is a gorgeous color. Um, Purple People Leader by Crafty Cow. Now, the nice thing about some of our vendors, like uh, BJ's Glow Derb, um, Crafty Cow, uh, KK Custom TNT, all give us codes, which like, hey, you know, it's nice to save some money. Plus that you're helping out a small business, which is really awesome. So use the codes. Um, and some of them have uh, like, it's just so that I know um, who watched. So some of it will be in my name. Some of them are just tumble epoxy and then a code. So I will post some codes when I'm done here. Um, just so you guys can save a few bucks. Which is nice, right? Right? Who doesn't like to save some money? And you can, I'm not really not using a whole lot. Again, I, I'll, I try. It doesn't matter if you work from bottom to top, top to bottom. It doesn't doesn't matter. Whatever you, makes your heart happy. Do your thing. Just make sure you're rubbing really well. Like like I said, I found the circles work really good because in between the, um, you know, like you're peeling your tape off and then you have like the, the edge. You want to make sure that you're getting your, you know, like your glitter up right up against that edge. So as I come back around, I'm looking, and this is the time, you know, like, like I said, if you decide... Oh, geez, you know, I really want to put some more dark purple in there. Right now, at this particular point, you can do that. You can totally come in, add more dark color if you want to, because there's there are no light colors on here yet. And that makes it super, like, super good. So when you're doing adhesive tapes, you're going to find like your needle gets sticky and you get like a, a buildup on it. You've got to clean it off. You've got to, you have to every once in a while because it'll start to tear your paper. The same with your machine. So make sure, and that's another reason that I only use tumbler tape. Okay, I'm not going to, not going to kid around here. I got some stuff off of Amazon. It's cat scratch paper. Basically, that's where this idea came from was cat scratch paper. And it's, it, you know, it's price wise, it's the same price. So I don't know what all everybody's like, oh, I get it on Amazon. Well, maybe because you could get it tomorrow. Um, but a lot of it's smaller. Like it's, it's a smaller sheet. 
but it's not designed to go through a cutting machine. And while you might get away with it a couple of times, it'll ball up, it can gum up and ball up your machine really bad. How do I know this? Because it happened to me. Um, I was cutting some tape. Um, it, for some reason, got caught up. It, it was thicker, a lot thicker than the tumbler tape is. And it just didn't, like, almost wreck my machine. Um, so luckily, it took, got it fixed. Um, I did get it fixed. So, yay for that. So... Okay, so as I come around, you just kind of kind of look and see. It, I mean, honestly, that's all this is. You're just like looking at your design and you're picking and saying, okay, which what color do I want to add in here? All right, now I want to go back and I'm going to add my darker color, like my the one that I originally was going to use. Because I had pulled off. Now, if you make a mistake and you do pull off a piece... Yeah, you can kind of put it back on, but it really doesn't. It really doesn't um, stick down really good. So do be in, do be aware that that can happen. I mean, in a pinch. Yeah, you can do that, but oh, damn it! That, see, that's exactly what I didn't want. I went and I pulled that off and I saw that line there and I was like, oh, okay, I have space and, I, and there's going to be room in between. There's not going to be room in between. So, guess what? We're going to go the other way. I love when I have trouble doing I'm on a live. I love it. Because then you guys get to see it. So, I'm going into the fourth darkest color now. Because, yeah, because it was being a pain. <laughs> every machine, every machine cuts different. I have a Cricut maker. I use washi setting, more pressure. I cut twice without unloading. I could probably cut once about 80% of the time. I do it twice just so I know I'm not gonna have any trouble. Cause it's very irritating when you are in the middle of, you know, trying to get something done and your, uh, your tape, your vinyl, your adhesive did not cut properly. And then you're back in there with an X-Acto blade and you're trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, no, I just saved myself a lot of time and a lot of aggravation and I just cut twice. No worries. That's why I'm here. I don't do this for my health. I do, I do this to help you guys. I really do. And I will go through periods where I don't do lives for a really long time. Um, just because I, I feel like people aren't getting anything out of it. So. I like, I like to know who watches. So if you have to leave or you... Uh, see one of my videos, please hashtag replay just so I know that you were interested and put a little comment in too, like if you found it to be helpful or if there were things that I could have covered more or less or, or whatever. Like again, a lot of times when I do lives, it's kind of overkill for people like, like for a very experienced person. It's kind of like, oh my God, she's just going on and on and on about how important it is to sand and prep your cup. And it's like, I already know this because I've been making cups for like, you know, five years. Well, there's a lot of people in our group, in the Tumblr Poxy group, they're brand new 
They, they have no idea what they're doing. They're very frustrated with the process. So that's why I really, you know, I try to cover as much as I possibly can just so people don't have to go through trouble. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Samantha. That's awesome. And like I said, if you guys think this is going to be neat, forget about it. Forget about it. It is. <laughs> this is like I'm covered with glitter. I am. It's up my nose. My allergies are kicking my butt today. Um. Yeah. It's messy. Glitter. Let's face it. If we work with glitter, it's messy. I went out the other day. I went to the store. I took a shower too. Went went to go to the grocery store. Standing there, and there's this little kid, <laughs> little kid, in the you know in the cart, and he's pointing at my face, and he goes, "Mama, Mama, that lady, she sparkles. Is she a fairy?" <laughs> and the mother looked at me, and I was kind of like, "Yeah, I work with glitter all the time. There's probably," and she said, "Yeah, there's glitter all over your face," and I was like, yeah, "Okay," <laughs> so it's just part of the. Part of the fun, you know, you go to the doctors and there's glitter in places that you don't want glitter. It's kind of like, oh my God, glitter everywhere. It is like the herpes of the crafters world. It truly is. So as we go, here we go. We're starting to see some life here. We're starting to see some things. Yeah, no problem, Tina. I'm glad you got your chance to chime in for a little bit. Every once in a while, I'll come in here with my hands and I rub down what is on here. Why am I doing that? First of all, because I have all my dark color, I have my dark colors on here. So whatever, if something were to shift into another one, it's really not going to show, number one. Um, number two is that I don't want to have to seal this. Yeah, I know, but I don't. And if you brush it down enough, uh, you don't need to. You don't have to. You can. You can epoxy seal over it or you could um, use your spray seal, whatever you want to do. Perfectly fine. Okay, so I think there's probably almost enough here. I love this file though. This is like my new favorite file. It really is. It's like my new favorite. Um, I did a couple of tangrams just because I thought that they would be really cool to do. And uh, honestly, doing tangrams with, on Tumblr tapes like pfft, so easy. Like it's like 40 minutes max. 40 minutes, you're done where with your old fashioned way where you do the Mod Podge or tack it over and over and you get to come back in over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's like, oh God, no. Mm -mm. So done with that. But I love this file. I just think this file is super cool. And I've been making a bunch of files too. Um, and the, the tumbler tape just makes it so fun and so easy. Like if I'm, I'll just print out a few ahead of time. Like I have a stack of them. And then, you know, like if I'm, I just need to relax or whatever. I have a really bad back and I have bad arthritis and I use this as a form of pain management. So it's kind of like, okay, what am I going to do? And how am I going to get through this? Uh, let me grab one of my files and uh, a cup and I will sit down and I will glitter for a little while and it really helps me a lot so what I'm doing is, is I'm just peeling I'm being very careful because I want to use my purple rain color Thanks, Sandra. I, that's why I do it. I I kind of try to cover stuff because, you know, honestly, 
when I first started, I had nobody to help me. Like, nobody, nobody helped me. I've been working with epoxy for 10 years. And I had no help. I had nobody to educate me on what was good and what wasn't. I had nobody to tell me the perils. Um, I had nobody. I had nobody. And I love the fact that there's all these groups now that are a, a lot of times really helpful for people, but sometimes not because, you know, people can kind of be jerks and that's no, no kidding. I mean, I'm in, I've been in a few groups where people are just damn rude. That's like, I won't, won't have that here that we don't tolerate that here in this group. There's no bullying. There's no cutting other crafters down. There's, it, it is just, we, we try to be very loving and supporting here because, you know, everybody starts someplace. And I love to teach. And I truly do enjoy, I mean, I do a lot of teaching, um, not just cupping. I do a lot of stuff. So it's fun. It's fun. And I will continue to do it as long as I find it fun. Um, so this color is interesting. It's called Purple Rain. It's by BJ's Glitter. And it, um, it's kind of a really black purple with a tiny, like, mauve bit in it. It's super, I, it reminds me almost of, like, like raisins. No, but you know, like what well, a lot of time you think of raisins is brown, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's a very strange color, but I like it, but it's super, super, super dark. Like, like super dark. Um, But up against the purple, like the, the like the indigo ice, it's not going to show. So that's why I'm trying to kind of come in here. Some of these pieces are very big. Um, when you're pulling out the, pulling these off, they're they're pretty large. So I want to save those. I did not. I bought. I got my file at um, kkcustomtnt.com. It's called the Brush Stroke Patina. And I also get my tumbler tape there. And you can use Kiri 10 um, if you want to try the tumbler tape. It's really amazing. Okay. So again, you know, like I said, you just keep coming in and you just keep going around. How cool is that? Um, I will be doing a like actual paintbrush one um, probably in a week or two. Um, okay. to kind of pay attention to because there's like these really cool little spots where they're it's just a little bit but it honestly makes a huge difference in your cup like when you're coming in and you're going oh that's just a teeny tiny little piece I'm not gonna fill it in with a different color I'm just gonna you know like basically take off this big piece and take that off too but it changes the look of the cup so it's definitely like utilize it and, and get all your different colors in. Okay. And then once I get my camera set up, I keep saying I'm going to do that. Then I'll have you guys overhead so you can watch and stuff like that. The problem that I found was is that 
by having the camera hanging overhead, um, which makes it a little easier for you guys to sort of see what's happening. It's a huge disadvantage for me because I can't see your comments and I can't answer your questions. And of course the thing would be up here. So that would mean I have to keep standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down, which would make your live like, you know, I don't know, two hours longer than it already is. So little tip, when you're doing a chunky, you have to add a fine glitter with it, particularly when you're doing adhesive tape. It, you have to. Why do you have to? Because there's, there's spaces. So it, it's going to leave. Let me show you. Let me show you. Oh, let me show you. Okay. So here's just a little, all a piece of tumbler, um, okay, little paste. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take this off. Doot. Wait a second. My old hands are not happy. Okay. So let's just say this, this was my cup. Okay. So I'm going to lay it here. So you can see what happens. Now I'm going to take my chunky. And I'm just going to do this side here. I'm going to put some down. Okay. And then I'm going to rub it just like I normally would. Now you see, like you can still see the white underneath here because this, you know, I've got some chunky and I have some medium in here, but it, it didn't, didn't really cover well. Um, I don't feel, I don't feel like it, it covers well. So what I do is, is I will take... little measuring cup and I just do a little bits at a time it's easier to mix more than to have a whole unless you really love the color combo and then you can come back in so this is called mermaids unicorn tears it's like one of my favorites if you haven't got this guys oh my god this is so gorgeous um you do a black cup just black spray painted cup. You can use glitter if you want to, but just black spray paint. Put your epoxy on and then sprinkle this down at the bottom or the top of it and do like a cascade with it so that it, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. It's like one of my, mm. okay. So I think the closer colors are going to be, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of Maleficent in here and then I'm going to also add just a pinch of this indigo ice which is really dark I love mixology by the way I I actually end up making a lot of my own glitters colors because I, I just love mixing and then just take your thing and stir it up really good Now we'll do the other side. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to pour this on here. Okay. And then I'm going to rub it in just the same way. You see the difference from this side, which is the side where we just put it on with no fine glitter in here to this side here. Also, you've got more of the chunky sticking, the big stuff sticking on this side too. Now, if you tap this a little bit more of it's going to come off, but it really does make a difference. And then if you still don't have any coverage, all you need to do is just take your finger, dip it in your glitter or sprinkle it back on there and rub it back in and boom. Pretty.
So, anyhow, that's that's all you do. And this is a great thing to use with your little scraps. Because it gives you a chance to play with your different glitters and say, okay, how, how is that going to look if I cover it? How is that not going to look if I cover it? Um, paper plates are great because, like, let's say you want to make a color palette for what you're going to do. actually have one. So my base of my cup was white that I was going to do. And then I wanted to do this rainbow effect. But I wanted to see, like, what colors were going to work well next to each other. rather Because I didn't want to do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, indigo, violet. You know, I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. And um, I found that, you know, like, these colors worked super well together. But then the orange that I used, I didn't like the look of the orange at all. Like, I, I totally didn't like how the orange was. So that's why you can make these little color palettes super good. And use your tumbler tape scraps. Okay. So I'm going to get back to it. Back to it. All right. I'm not going to do a lot with the chunky. I'm really not. Because, well. Mm. I want to just try. I'm going to try one spot. I'm going to see if it's too much aggravation. I'm not even going to bother. I like it. I like it. But I'm not, again, I, I don't want to overkill on the chunky. Um, I'm just going to do a few spots. But this one I'll do a little bit bigger spot. So I didn't mix a whole lot of it. So feel free to ask any questions that you have, guys. So we were talking about poxy seal, actually, earlier today. Um, and somebody had asked me about, you know, how do I do certain things with poxy seal? And I really like, um, I really like it for my glitter application. I'm finding that when I'm doing these cups and I always, like I said, I always leave the bottom. I always leave the bottom. And sometimes I don't want to, sometimes I don't want to cover it. Sometimes I do want to cover it, but then I've got my whole thing done and it's like, okay, well, how am I going to put, you know, like whatever, you know, the glue and the Mod Podge and the this and the that. And it's like, oh my God, no, I don't, I can't deal with that. Um, so I've been taking a little tiny bit of poxy seal. Like to do the bottom of this cup, it's like really, it's like two milliliters most. Um, and then add a little bit of whatever color that you want the bottom to be. Now, normally I go with the darker, because honestly, because it's just easier for coverage wise. You know, you can go with the darker color. And, um, oh, it's so easy. So, so easy doing it. Okay, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Say I'm talking and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing and I'm getting myself all screwed up. Okay, this one. So epoxy seal though. Oh, geez, guys, if you don't have it, it's, it actually, I, I honestly, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. It's kind of, I'm on the fence about it. Um... I have an allergy to vinyl and it is a vinyl adhesive. So that was a big like oof for me, but it works really good and I haven't had any problems. So if you, if you haven't tried it, give it a shot and see super awesome. Makes it really fast too. Cause I, I had done a, a comparison video, a comparison photo where I took black, acrylic paint, just my typical apple barrel black acrylic paint. I put it in Mod Podge, equal amounts. So, um, equal amounts, one to one ratio. I did Mod Podge and I did, um, poxy seal and I had two different identical cups. I put it on. I immediately came back in with my perfect black glitter 
and you can see the photo. Um, it was like, wow, the epoxy seal side completely covered. It looked fantastic. And the Mod Podge side needed to be, has to get another coat. So yeah. Mm -mm. All right. I, sh I wish I had mixed more of this because it, it's looking really good. Where did you get the template to cut on your Cricut? KKCustomTNT.com. It's called Brush Stroke Patina. Oh, I'm really liking that a lot. I think that looks super good. Yeah. And the chunky's working out very well. So, all right, one more chunky spot. I think right here. It is kind of fun deciding like what, where are you going to put stuff? It really is. It's kind of like, oh, where do I want to put that? That color, that color. Okay. I might have enough for one more spot, but I'm not sure. Again, you can always mix more. Just remember what you mix together. Sometimes I write it down. I really, really like that. Like, wow. Like, I kind of want to do a whole cup with that. So I'm really liking how that looks. The thing you'll find, though, is, is like you, you'll end up having like a lot of your chunky left. Um, and the fine glitter has really stuck to your adhesive. So when it, what's coming off is mostly just the chunky. So that's why I was saying, like, yes, I have a bunch left in here, but I might not have enough to do another... Do another spot. Uh, right here. Okay, last spot. Last spot. Yeah, it's... Um, I'm like out of the fine glitter in the mix. And the reason that that happens is, is because the chunky weighs more, so the lighter stuff is going to go down first. Try and get a little more. There's like one little spot where I can really see. Again, I did not prop my cup. I did nothing to it. And this is like my only time that I don't prep my cups is using tumbler tape. I am a avid fan of spray painting, sanding, the whole business. Because it's part of the process. It's part of how you prep a cup and what you're supposed to be doing. So it just gives you a better quality. Some people do, some people don't. Totally up to you. It's just what I do. I do find cleaning up periodically is very beneficial and helpful. Okay, so we used our purple rain. We used our indigo ice. We used purple people to eater. We used unicorn tears, which I love. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Yes, I just kind of pushed them out of the way. Okay, now we're going to come in with our lighter. So we have our two lights. These are super light, and then we're going to do our foil. You always do your foil last because your foil can scratch. Um, and believe me, it can. It's like, ugh. All right, so we're going to do Maleficent next. And I want to kind of come in. Now, with super lights, you will find that you will may be able to see whatever base you have underneath your cup. So, if you're going to be doing silver, you may get a silver sheen. Um, if you have white, you may see a little, like, white there. 
I kind of like the silver look, honestly. There's just one part in this cup that I just love, and it's the, actually this piece I'm taking off. It's kind of like all jaggedy, and it looks really cool. So is it hot where you all are? We have a heck of a heat wave going on here. It's like, oh my God, it's so hot out. My husband is outside gardening or doing yard work, actually. I did a ton of yard stuff yesterday, and my back was like, uh-uh, bitch, you're all done today. You stay in. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is looking super awesome. And then we have to decide what color foil we're going to use. All right. So, Poxy Seal is super cool, though. And I think you guys will enjoy it and really benefit from it. Um couple things that I do like about it is number one I don't have to go outside in the winter anymore to spray paint who doesn't like that right like I'm a New Englander it's cold it's gross out I totally don't want to be standing outside in the winter time and so you just add your paint to your uh, pox seal and Voila, you got a prepped cup. You do want to be a little careful with it because it is vinyl. So you might notice that it, it might peel a little bit. Um, so make sure you're sanding. The reason that it will peel is because it, it doesn't have enough to stick down to. So you definitely want to make sure you're sanding. It's 101. Oh my God. Ugh, yeah, gross. No, thanks. I hate winter. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I hate winter. Like, I'm not a winter gal at all. I've been a New Englander my whole life, pretty much. I mean, I've, I've lived in other parts of the country, but I've always just basically been here in New England. One would think I would be used to it by now, but I hate the winter. I hate it. It's cold. It's icy. It's gross out. I, hmm. Mm -mm. But I, I will never move to Florida because Florida is just, just ugh, it's gross. I, I don't like it there either. Um, Florida and New Orleans, the South, basically, it's too, like, God, it's so hot down there all the time. So, mm -mm. nope. And I usually like the heat. I'm a heat. I really am. I'm kind of like a big old dragon. I love the heat. Okay. I'm loving this. Look at this. This is like super awesome. I'm completely covered with glitter. All over my face. I can feel it. In my face. Uh, this is going to be there. That's glitter. So as you're coming now, this is when you start to get a little tricky because you're going to want to remember, okay, I still have my white diamonds that I want to use and I still have foil that I want to use. So I want to make sure that I'm leaving good spaces for those. Um, you can put foil pretty much anywhere. Like seriously, it's pretty, pretty awesome doing foil. Uh, 
Okay. Oop, oop. Alrighty. Then we'll put this back. I gotta get more of this color. So like, like I said, we all have our favorites. So you go through phases, I think, with when it comes to color and glitter and stuff like that, and you go through. But this thing, I love this. This Maleficent is, it's just, it's kind of a gold iridescent purple. Um, it's got a beautiful shimmer to it. It's just, just super pretty. It's very light, but not as light as like the white diamonds, which is really pretty. Okay, so now we're doing our, our white diamonds. I'm not going to put a lot of that in here. Um, I'm trying to see where these lines go. Uh, see how this looks this is called wisteria diamonds and it's it's a white it's basically like a ultra pale purple like barely barely even visible with color um really brightens it up So that's going to have foil. I was playing with my tumbler tape the other day and I was learning that like to do an ombre, you can totally do an ombre with it. I did in Northern Lights, which I think came out awesome. Um, and I did three of them just to get the technique down. So that was really cool. And I did do a, a tutorial on it where you're sprinkling on your glitter, but you're not rubbing it in right away. You're waiting. Uh, pretty much whatever is on the cup is going to sort of be a loss, or you can use it as like a, what do you call it, a dump cup or something like that. Um, because you don't want to rub it until you're all done so that the colors kind of blend together. That was an interesting experience, and I, I really liked the result that I got. I think it came out super awesome. Okay, almost done. So now we're going to do, I think we'll put foil there. So this. will have to be clear. It's so exciting. Hey, Brandy. I'm almost out of Maleficent. Oh, makes me sad. I'm loving this. This is amazing. Amazing. So pretty. I, and you guys can't even really see how beautiful this, this is. Um, so again, the Maleficent and the Unicorn Tears make all the difference in the world. Now, I think just for mix to mix it up, I'm going to use a little grape bait. Maybe on just one, one or two spots, just because this is a lot of foiling that will need to be done. And particularly in this like humongous space here, it's just such a big space um, for foil.
Oh, cool. All right, that worked. Okay, sort of tour, which is awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a little experiment here. So I'm going to take my, my grape ape. All right. This is kind of contaminated here. So, um, cause I did have some other stuff in here. So we're just going to use this. So this is the Wisteria Diamonds. Then I take some grape ape and mix that in. Um, I want it really light. I want to, I want to keep it really light, um, for that one spot. So just going to mix that in and I do find putting it on heavy when you're, when you're doing a chunky over the tumbler tape, you do want to kind of go in a little heavy with your glitter just so that you're sure that you're getting all that fine glitter is, is actually going to attach itself. Um, but it also lets some of the chunky stuff grab. Sometimes you do have to over your chunky spots, like when you're adding chunky glitter, you might need to come back in with your whatever sealer of choice, whether it's epoxy seal, mod podge, tack it over and over, whatever you want to use. Um, just to get more of the chunky part on there, I think it looks pretty cool. But there's some really awesome stuff in the Grape Ape. Like there's little stars in here and things like that. And I kind of really wanted some more of that look. Um, so that's going to have vinyl. I'm sorry. I'm... Yeah. So what I want to do... So I'm going to do this other spot here. Instead of rubbing, I'm going to tap. I want to see. Yep, I got more adhesion there. So that's a good thing to know. So when you are when you have your chunky and mixed together, press down instead of rubbing at first. What that's going to do is it's going to take some of the big pieces and it's going to push it into your tumbler tape. Then that way there, uh, you're going to get more of your design pieces in there. I feel like I'm pinching it. Pinch it. Works. Does work and you get like some nice pieces in there. So, and then brush. Okay, so I think now we're ready for foil. Put that there, that there, maybe one here. Foil, foil. So, like, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm a madman because I'm talking to myself. So, this is going to have foil here. Uh... Foil here. Okay, I think I'm good. So now we're ready to foil. So this is fun doing foil. So let's get rid of all of our our glitter and put all our glitters away. I'm just gonna push these out of the way. All right, so now I'm just going to sweep up real quick. Because I don't want anything getting into my foil. Foils are weird. Like when you're doing foil, um, it's like if stuff gets caught underneath of your foil, then it causes like tearing. It can cause really weird like little ripples. So give your cup a really good brushing and then come in with your hand and I just rub. 
they kind of go like this. You may find that some of those big chunky pieces pop off. And that's kind of why, like, after I'm done um, with my foil, I'll come in and maybe do, like, a, a little touch-up over those areas. Just because I really want more of that chunky glitter look in there. So that was um, Wisteria Diamonds Maleficent Figalicious Purple Rain Indigo Ice Grape Ape Unicorn Tears and then um, Purple People Eater by Crafty Cat. So so everything else is BJ's glitter. Um. Okay, now we're gonna do oh. You know what? I did say I, I would show you guys how to do mica. And let me do, I'm going to do a couple spots with mica. Okay. So I'm hoping, because I saw this amazing, 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 amazing um, mica on um, BJ's, which is, um, it's like an iridescent color shift. But I also have another one from a different company. Uh, I want to go with like purple, so that's why I'm. I've not played a whole lot with these because they are like mega expensive. Mega expensive. Okay, so what you're going to do is, is you're going to get a little brush. If you want it. Oh, crap. Oops. Oh, that was not good. I just knocked over like, I have like all my little glitter cups all stacked up and I just knocked it over. Okay. Those are foil flakes. That's not what I want to Although those are pretty darn cool looking. Um, need purple. Ah, here it is. Purple. Although I, I like these foil flakes. I wouldn't mind trying those. Okay, so to do mica... There's a couple things that you do need to know about. All right. So the first thing is, is you, you will need a brush. You want something that's pretty soft, um, but also has a firmness to it, if that makes sense. Um, and I was like, I'm looking. It's just a paintbrush. Okay, then you're going to take your, your area and figure out where I'm going to put this. Because again, this is pretty dark, so I don't want to really have it up against something super light because it can affect it. And also, I'm going to tell you guys with mica, it goes everywhere. So all you're going to do is you're going to take your brush... And you're going to, this is not purple, this is kind of teal. But you know what? I think that's going to look cool. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to put a little couple of dabs down. And then I'm just going to very lightly come back in and I'm going to brush. And then I'm going to hold this over my little container and I'm going to kind of press, push off the excess back down into the container. Because again, this stuff is outrageously expensive. 
but this is a color shift so it goes on green and comes out purple so it's kind of like a green purple color shift um, do be careful when you're doing your micas uh, if you're going to be going near your bottom where you have like sometimes there's these weird little bubbles that happen that's generally why I only do uh, I only bring my cut line down this far and also I don't generally do micas on the bottoms so I'll do like two more spots just to make it uniform so it doesn't look weird so I'll do this one again so all you're gonna do is dip it in your mica Going to come down and just sort of put a little line there and then I'm going to take it I'm going to tip it back over again now if this was just plain mica I wouldn't I wouldn't even be worried about it I would just like yeah whatever throw a little bit away but this stuff this is crazy expensive um this color shifting one now BJ's has another has one that's way more um like economically feasible, like way, way more. This, this little tiny container was like $20. Um, so again, that's, it's really not like economically feasible. So that would drive the price up on the cup. Okay, so I have one spot there, one spot there. Wait a minute. One here, one here. I'll just do this tiny little spot here. I'm just trying to keep it like uniform so that it doesn't look weird. Because um, I decided that I was going to put Micah in here. Micah's super easy though. Like honestly, Micah's are super easy to work with um, on adhesive. The thing is, is you you want to work, like let's say you're doing a large piece, like you're doing, a, um, actually I did one. If you guys have seen my Walter McCotter tribute page, uh, tribute sheet. I don't know where it is. It's, it's big, it's like 12 inch. Um, I did put a lot of micas in there too. You want to work from the middle outward. It's the same thing like if you were using like uh, pause markers or chalks and things like that. You want to go from the inside, the middle outward so that you're not touching it. You're not putting your arm in it because, oh my God, what a mess. Okay, so now that's our mica. Mica looks really cool. I think it adds like this really cool purple shimmery iridescence to it. And then what I think I'll probably do is this, I'll, I will um, put a border around here just to kind of cover up that ugly, like I said, these little weird spots. Sometimes you can slice through them with your X-Acto blade and then press them down very carefully. Um, normally, if you're just glittering, you're not even going to notice this. You're not even going to see it. But because I did, I did the mica. I, uh, I found a little, a little area that wasn't quite blended in enough. You'd also be very surprised how uh, far micas go. So just a teeny tiny bit and you just keep rubbing it very lightly and it will spread it out like seriously. It's and you want to make sure you get all the dust off. Like believe me, mica is very dusty and it makes a hell of a mess. So make sure you get it all off. Okay. So there's our mica. So now you guys look at all the things you're learning today. So you got all your micas on. Um, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Now we're going to do 
our foil. And I think, I think we're going to go silver because of the cool, oh jeez, there's so many cool tones, like cool, like as in warm versus cold, cool tones, not, wow, that's really cool, even though it is. Um, I think we're going to go with silver because this reminds me more of like a lunar, like, I think this, that would look actually really cool on here as in cool. Yay. Cool. Um, I think that that would look really neat if you put like, as, um, like moons or something, that would be really nice. Just let me clean my brush. I mean, my, um, my pen here cause it's. I'll get key. So uh, this is 99% alcohol. It's the only alcohol that I use. I buy it by the gallon. Usually I buy four gallons at a time just because it's so good. It dries almost instantly. Um, I use it in everything. I use it when I epoxy. I use it when I'm doing glitter. I use it when I do, I, I just use it all the damn time. Okay. So now my tip is clean and I can close it up. Yeah. And I do recommend that like, if you're not actively working on your pieces, uh, do close your weeding pen cause it is a needle and it doesn't feel good does not feel good when you stab yourself with it, which, yeah, I've done that a bunch of times. Hey, we all have to bleed for our art, right? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm all cleaned up. Now, um, to do foil, what you're going to need is, and I do recommend that you get these, get yourself one of these. This is called a, um, a stencil brush. You're also going to want to have, um, a pair of uh, tweezers, like you can use whatever is comfortable, but, but you want precision tweezers. You want something that's got like a nice little point on here. Um, you can get sets of these, like I said, Amazon were like really cheap. Um, Brandy over at um, BJ's Glitter does or did have some tweezers, precision tweezers. I don't know if she still still does. But usually she restocks stuff. I like my straight ones. I just personally really like the straight. Um, I used to work a lot with these, uh, the bent, you know, these, um, what do you call it? The curve ones. But either way, I, I generally have each of those aside. You don't need your brush anymore, your big brush. Um, but you do need to have a stencil brush. You also want to have a place where you can put your cup so that it's not going to be moving around on you when you're going to do your foil. So what we're going to do is we're going to decide, um, actually, I think what I'm going to do is this right here. I think I'm going to come back in. I'm going to put a little more mica in there just because if I'm looking at my silver and I'm looking at this, uh, this was the wisteria diamonds it's going to be too close in color so i'm going to lose something there so i'm just going to do um i'm going to put the yeah yeah i'm going to do that but uh you know and i i probably should do it now because i don't want to do it i really don't want to do it afterwards because if the mica shifts on me not cool. Okay, so again, Micah, uh, I do suggest get, um, get, you know, like I said, the brushes that you use do matter. <clears throat> you can also use little tiny brushes because I want to make sure that I don't get anything on this, this white, um, well, Wisteria Diamonds. I don't want any of this mica bleeding into it. So what I'm doing is this, I'm just coming in really carefully and I'm just taking all the powder because that's what it is it's just it's just powder and I'm just pulling it up 
and I don't want, like I said, I don't want that in my blue, in my, oh my God, I'm, I'm okay, guys, really. I just haven't had enough coffee. Don't, don't be afraid to move your work around when you're working. Um, I find that turning my cup different angles at different times really makes a huge um, difference with, with my work when I'm, when I'm working gives me the ability to make sure that I'm getting all the nooks and all of the crannies that I need to be in. And that's with anything too, like wh whatever you're doing. Okay. So just that little, little bit there. <sighs> yes, that is the perfect way to get it off unless you have a can of air. Uh, do be careful if you're using cans of air because um, if you happen to hit an open container, oh my God, what a mess. And besides that, then you would cry. Um, I'm dying to use these. This is another one. This is uh, like these beautiful flakes. Like I can't even, like they're, they're purpley green mauve. Oh my God, they're just so pretty. But I think I would do that in epoxy. I think I might do those in epoxy. Sorry, I'm babbling at myself. Okay, so on to foil. Let's do foil. Still have some of you guys hanging in with me. That's awesome. Okay, so the first thing is, is you want to stabilize your cup because you're going to need both hands. You need, you need to, so you can't be holding a cup. You can't be, uh, you could put it on a stand. I personally find it, it's easier if you lay your cup down. If you don't have a stand, well, you know what? You have a paper towel. Just take a paper towel and lay it on there. Uh, or you can use a, a like a soft towel, lay it down on there. It just keeps it from shifting around. And then what you're gonna do is, is you're just gonna open your container. These are like really cheap, very economical to use. Just oh. take a few minutes. Okay, so you don't want to touch these with your fingers. The reason that you don't want to touch them with your fingers is, is because they are super delicate. Um, you can see as I'm trying to unravel this, it's tearing. And that may not always be a concern. Um, but what I have found with these, the way that they pack the stuff in here, cause it's, it's marketed as foil flakes. You're going to get like chunks, like, okay, shit. hang on, try to get this out of here. Okay. You see this? It's a, a ball. Like we're going to have to like do some serious on a paper plate, cleaning, uh, uh, pulling it apart. You want to try and get your pieces as large as possible and as flat as possible, but don't worry about it because they're naturally, it's kind of like crinkled up um, tin foil. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Believe me, it doesn't matter. I want to get you guys angled so you can see. I need a cup cradle. Let's try this. I'm being inventive because I don't. These are great. Dollar Tree. Great microfiber towel. Plus that's super fat. Super soft. Okay. I'm going to lay my paper towel over this and I'm going to put this underneath so now hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. Okay. So we're going to work. We're going to start by just picking a spot. So we're just going to peel off our paper. Again, don't be touching this with your fingers. And you're going to take your, your foil and you're going to try and lay this in such a way that you're not going to have a whole bunch of crinkles and see how like this is going to kind of come apart. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so just see how that just like totally unfolded. 
Now, okay, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hold it with my finger. I'm going to kind of come in here and I'm going to lay this because I am like the kind of person where I hate wasting stuff. So lay it down. Don't touch it with your fingers. Take the tip and just press it down. And then you just pull off what you don't need. Okay, I'm just tapping it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm filling this whole gap. Or uh, this section. I'm not worrying about anything. I'm just making sure that I have like foil over the whole area. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get a pack of this uh, foil flakes and they'll be like like my gold one. These sheets are like really nice and big. You can buy them just as foil sheets. They're much more expensive. Um, so, you know, hey, this just takes a few minutes. I'm not touching my tape. I'm to actually just touching the foil. Try not to, to like press down or do anything. And we're just laying these on here, making sure that everything is covered. There is waste. I will tell you now, there will be waste here um, that's not really usable. And that's okay, because like I said, these things are, this stuff is like really inexpensive. It's not like the foil sheets like these. Now, you can use things like this, which is, this is nail foil tape. You can get them at KK Custom TNT. You can get them at um, uh, Amazon. You can get them pretty much like a billion different places. Um, the, the problem that I'm finding is what it does is it leaves. So when you have your um, your piece and you pull off your piece and you lay this this flat sheet down, over it and then you're rubbing and you're rubbing and you're rubbing it's really impossible to get all the way to the edge so then you end up with a gap around it and it, it's kind of like an outline and it looks really cool but sometimes that's not the look that you're going for okay so now i have this all covered now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the, my stencil brush and I, what i'm going to do is this, i'm just going to tap Why am I tapping? Because what it's doing is it's pressing the foil into the adhesive tape. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm lightly going to brush. And I'm going to take my finger and lightly lightly everything is light don't come in here digging at it because it'll scratch your foil but now you'll never you would never know that I just use like six or seven pieces for that spot it's all laying perfectly flat it's really nice I'll do another one with you I'll do this top one Again, you, you know, like I said, you don't want to be like, take a big ball of this and lay it on there. You don't want to do that. You really do want to come in and kind of unravel it the best that you can so that it's just a single, a single layer of the, um, the foil. Because actually when it's doubled and tripled and like, you'd be surprised how thin this stuff is. Um, and when you're I'm gonna try to use my words um it gets bunchy like it, it will bunch up on you and it doesn't end up yielding a really good result when you actually have uh super thick layers of the foil sometimes it, like you can't tell how thick it is so what i do is is i always just put it uh, I'll gently place it down and then 
once it starts to stick, then you can kind of start to come in and un unravel it. And again, this is this seriously is just practice. Doing these, uh, doing this work with the foil, and I am going to be doing a probably doing a whole tutorial and just working with foils. Um, because there's a lot of different stuff that you can use. You can use, um, there's like some Art Deco foil adhesive that you can use. Um, foils are very popular in the nail industry. So, you know, people going to get their fingernails done. That, that was just a little ball and I just unraveled it. Um, so you can use some of the nail adhesive um, stuff if you want, you know, it really depends on, on the application, what you're working on. Uh, you can use tack it over and over again. I, I did try using the epoxy seal on it. It didn't work quite the way that I wanted it to, but I'm going to try it again and I'm going to see, um, you know, just trying some different applications and the way that you apply, um, so I'm going to try epoxy seal again with it. I did Mod Podge. I really didn't like that. I found that the thing is, is like if it's a little stickier, like with the tack it over and over again, or the adhesive, like the tumbler tape, um, it, it, if it's got like a tackiness to it, it'll grab a hold of the foil and make the foil um, kind of behave better for you. Okay, and then you just check it over. Have a box around it. What do you mean? Basically, you're cutting your cup Well, you want to size it to the, to your cup, so no, I it doesn't have like. I think that um, the KK Custom TNT one does have a cut line around it. I believe, I'm pretty sure, because honestly, that shouldn't make any difference at all, because you're going to cut your your cup to the size of your cup, and then just slice off the rest with your um you know, like a rotary blade or something like that. And they're super easy to size. Some of the stuff on Etsy though, guys, is garbage. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's seriously garbage. I don't know how people sell the stuff that they sell. Like I've gotten some, I, I, I learned how to make my own files because I get sick and tired of buying files that didn't work or they weren't sized right. Um, so that was my motivation to learn how to do it. And it's totally worth learning how to do it. Like totally worth learning how to do it. Um, I tried to do a couple of tutorials on it, but honestly, that's the kind of stuff where that that would more be like a paid class. Um, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of work to show you guys how to do that stuff. So if there's interest, I will do it, but I would do it as a class. Okay. Yes, you always have to measure your cup. Always. Always, always, always. So things that we, we need to know and be aware of as crafters, as if you're doing this as a craft, as a hobby, great. If you're doing this as a business, that's great. But the principles are the same where 
you guys need to like learn how to do things and not always expect it the easy way. So if you learn how to like one of the things when I was sewing, I found a pattern in it and it was a great pattern and I love this pattern and my customer really wanted this dress. She wanted this dress so badly, but she was a large lady. And there was no way that the stress was going to ever work for her. So I learned how to adjust the pattern. Nobody was going to do that for me. So once you, when, my point in this is, it, it, what I'm saying is, is you guys need, if you learn how to do things for yourself and you learn, how do I measure my cup? There's like no cup that you will ever come up against that you will not be able to cover properly. You will never have a problem with a file that you buy because it doesn't fit. Like, and honestly, I, I have bought, I have gotten cut files. I see friends that buy these files and the, like, I don't know what that person was doing when they designed it, but the stuff, it doesn't work right. Um, you put it in your, your cutter into whatever, Cricut, Silhouette, whatever program that you're using. And it, it it's not cutting properly because they they over they did these overlays and they forgot to remove the bottom stuff, uh, you know the bottom bits that were there because they didn't you know they just didn't make the time they just said oh hey I'm gonna make a file because this is really cute and I'm gonna sell it for whatever I'm gonna sell it for and they get a whole bunch of money and then all these people are like going well, I just wasted all my money on this file because it doesn't work. We learn how to do that ourselves. And sky is a limit, guys. Sky is a limit. So then, like, if you have somebody who says, hey, I want, like, my, um, she's kind of like my adopted daughter. She has a little boy, and he loves stitch. Loves stitch. And I wanted to make him a stitch cup. So... I, I'm not going to go buy one because that's... You know, it's technically trademarked. People shouldn't be making money off of Disney. Um, again, if you do, then that's up to you. But I learned, I, I just made my own. I was like, I, I drew it out. I made him a stitch. And he loves it. Is it perfect? No. But you know what? It looks damn cool. So we learn how to do things. And that's part of the craft. That's why we call it crafting. It's part of the craft. It's part of the learning. It's part of the excitement of it is as we figure it out. So learning how to measure your cup is a very, 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 very important step in cup making. Whether you're do whatever you're making, whether you're doing tumbler teeth, whether you're doing vinyl, whether you're do whatever you're doing, you need to learn how to measure your cup. It's not hard, but you do need a couple of tools. You need to have a real tape measure, not a shop tape measure, um, you know, that's metal. You need to have more of a seamstress's tape measure. Yes, you can go on Amazon. You can get like, I think they call it the smart tape measure and it's digital and it does all this stuff. And you know what? Everybody I know that, that has, I think I have one person that has one that loves it and everybody else is like, ah, oh, this is not good. You just get your regular old fashioned dollar. You can go to Dollar Tree, get a seamstress's tape measure. One of these works perfect. Super easy. Super easy to learn how to measure your cup. The next challenge is, is the decimal points because most of the programs, I can't really speak for Silhouette because I, I don't have one and I don't, I don't really know how they work. Um, Although I will be probably getting the silhouette business because I'm just so over dealing with um, design space. Um, anyhow, sorry, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Making your files decimal points. So when you're putting it in for the size, so let's say your cup measures, you know, nine point. Uh, nine and a third or something like that. And I believe it's like 9.357. So your decimal points are challenging. So there's a lot of us that don't like math. We're not good at math. That's why they make calculators. But there are charts. 
that will take the inch, an inch, and I do use them, and I have them, and I will happily share them with you, um, where it takes an inch and it breaks it down and says, okay, if you have something that is, you know, an inch uh, and a half, uh, or, you know, a half an inch, well, what's the number? Well, everybody knows, an, you know, a half an inch is 0.5, it's 0 0.50, actually. But what if it's a quarter of an inch? Well, that's pretty easy because that's 0.25. But then what happens if it's half of that? So, you know, you have 0.25. Well, then it's it's not just 12.5. It's 0, 1, 2, you know, 0. 0.5. It, it gets complicated. So that's why we have charts and we use those charts and it just makes it so much easier, guys. Trust me. But then you know how to do it and you're not having to rely on some person who's making a file and hope, and you're hoping that they did it right. So that's foiling and it works super good. So remember, tap, once you lay on your foils, tap down and then lightly brush back and forth. And the reason that you're lightly brushing back and forth is, is because you don't want to scratch your foil. You just want it to lay down. And then I just burnish it lightly with my finger just to make sure that I get all those little around the edges. Um, you might find sometimes that you have a little bit of the foil sticking up next to the edges on the very, very edges. So just take your brush and you just kind of flick it one way and then flick it the other way and it takes care of all of that. And that's all there is to it. So I think this came out pretty cool. There's a few more spots to do, but I'll do those later. Um, now when you rub this, there's no glitter coming off of here at all. So this is all varnished. Once I get the foil done, uh, then I have a choice whether I want to do the bottom or not. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really depends on what I want to do. Um, actually, most of the time I do do the bottom. I, I just like the look of it. Um, but it's, it's so easy now that I know how to do it. Um, and it's, it's very, 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 very simple. So with this particular cup for my bottom, really, when you're looking at your colors, you want to go with the dominant color, the color that, um, stands out to you the most and it's not necessarily the lightest color or the darkest color. It's the one that really pops, the one that stands out because that's gonna that's gonna be what's here on the bottom. You could do silver um, because there's a lot of silver in here. But honestly, I would probably go with. I wouldn't do the dark purple because I think it's gonna take because this is very like. I want to call it the cool tones. It's a very lunar look here. So I would probably go more with uh, something that's in the lighter shades or the silver shades. You don't always have to go with the darkest one. Pick the one that you like the best. And then the way that you're going to do it is this. You can use your epoxy seal or whatever adhesive that you're going to do. And I'll show you how to do this. This is like so easy to do. Um, so I do my epoxy seal a little bit different than everybody else because I don't work from my container. I didn't cut off my, my tip or anything like that. So make sure I have enough. And then I just uh, put my little, that little 
protective sleeve back down in the bottle cap and then I cap this up really tight. You always want to make sure you shake it, shake it really good, really, 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 really good because it does settle. Um, I'm almost out of battery on my phone and on my laptop. So let me shut that. Um, so I want to show you how to do this real quick. Okay, so now I have a tiny bit of epoxy seal. Remember, we're doing one-to-one -one ratio. I am going to go with the darker, but I'm going to use a lighter glitter. So I have approximately one milliliter of epoxy seal in here. Now I'm going to add approximately one milliliter of my paint. Epoxy seal will turn everything lighter because well it's white but when it dries most of the time it doesn't so you'll have like a really really dark purple it'll turn it a little bit lighter sometimes it turns it more pastel-y um, don't worry about it. it it should be fine because when it dries it shouldn't matter um, you would be surprised how little of this you need as well. So I mix one milliliter of epoxy seal and one milliliter of paint in. I now have two milliliters and that's probably going to be enough to do two or three. Um, three at least bottoms. Uh, but I could probably also do like a whole cup. And then what you're going to do is after you mix it really well, epoxy seal also cleans up super easy. Um, you're just going to take I start in the middle and then I come outwards to the edge. I did not sand this, so I may have to come back in again. Normally I would have sanded this, the bottom that is, um, just because it, this is a vinyl adhesive and because it's a vinyl adhesive, it can sometimes repel um, against the metal. But if you sand it, it won't do that. And all I'm doing here is this, I'm just putting a nice coat over all of the silver. You don't want this on here really thick. You just want a nice, nice layer. Try and get it as smooth as you possibly can. All right, so now I've got my bottom done. Now, I will put this in a Ziploc bag, and then that will save it for a few hours for me. Now I want to do my bottom. Ouch. Ouchie. Uh, I think I'll use this color here, this purpley. Done.
Boom. Now I won't get in there and start fiddling with that up top. And I won't bother brushing off the sides or anything like that because I don't want to hit my wet epoxy seal. But that's all you have to do. And now it's all done and now it's ready. Except for the vinyl pieces that I still have to finish. But um, like I said, I'll do those later. Because my battery's about to die on my phone. So, if you guys have questions, you let me know. Um... And uh, codes are um, BJ's Glitter is um, Kiri30. If you guys uh, have never bought from BJ's, they're amazing. And if you do buy from BJ's, they have um, a great sale. Um, it's 25, I think it's 25% off. So that's super awesome. If you want to try tumbler tape or pick up the patina file, um, which is here. Uh, it's from kkcustomtnt.com. It's Kiri10. And uh, it's just my first name. All capital letters. 10. Get you a little discount. You get to try amazing tumbler tape and get yourself a great file. Um, you know, of course, we got our, our Tumblr epoxy, Swift epoxy, whatever, what, whichever one of the epoxies that you love best. I'm a 2.0 gal. I love 2.0. It's like my favorite. Um, so I do, you know, I do 2.0. Uh, but whatever you do, whatever you're doing is going to work great over this. Swift epoxy, regular OG, uh, 2.0 will work perfectly beautifully. Um and there won't be any problems with like repelling or, and there's no problems with like this doing strange stuff. It's all done. It's not going to bleed out on you. It's not going to shift around because like, seriously, if you rub it and then look at your fingers, rub it, look at your fingers. If you see glitter, well, then maybe you do need to seal it. If it, if you keep rubbing it and you're still getting glitter, you might need to seal it. Like a lot of times at the bottom, you'll have to. But most of the time, I don't seal it. The only time that I might seal it is because of my bottom. That that might migrate because it's dark color. And I really don't want that dark color coming up into all these beautiful light colors. Particularly going over my silver foil. I might just hit the bottom of this with a clear layer epoxy seal. Once it's fully dry, clear layer epoxy seal. Or you can just use your regular spray sealer whatever makes your heart happy um you know i like the epoxy seal i i do think it does make it matte so that's another thing that a lot of people say is well what did i do wrong why is my why is my glitter look dull it's actually not it's just sealed and when it when it's fully dry once you put the epoxy on it shines right back up again it's not a problem um but anyhow all right so guys i Thank you for hanging out with me and for sticking around for as long as y'all did. Uh, I have some other really cool tutorials coming up. Um, if there, of course, as always, something you want to learn, you let me know. And uh, we are down to 1%, so I'm going to say goodnight. And you guys, happy crafting, happy Sunday. Have a great day. Bye.